everyone, this is Piana and welcome to my video. And I know previously I said that 2021 was going to be devoted to horror and more fantasy, but it's looking like it's going to be more steered towards steampunk novels because, as I said before, my dad's really sick at the moment and he is basically confined to one room uh, in his bed and so reading is something he's doing quite a bit of recently and he really likes steampunk literature specifically like alternative history steampunk uh, literature so i've been uh basically being his library as it were and uh i've kind of gone through all the steampunk novels i own so now i'm trying to get hold of new ones so because I am so far behind with my video schedule because um, obviously my dad being sick has been taking up rather a lot of my brain space and my time so I haven't had time to like make videos about all the books I've been reading during the month of December and during the month of January. So today I'm going to give you two novels, uh, two steampunk novels. The first one is a Bone Shaker by Cherie Priest. And the second one is Mortal Engines by Philip Reeve. So I'm going to start off with Bone Shaker, which because that was the one I read first. And this is the first book in a quartet. There are four uh, novels in this series. They're not uh, novels that like an actual series. They don't follow on from each other. They're about different characters um, within this novel, which is interesting. I, I, I appreciate kind of uh, worlds that are created in this way and series that kind of take a different road with different characters. Uh, but I, I've only read the first one so far. Um, my dad's got all the other ones, so uh, I'll read them when he's done with them. So uh, this book starts off, it takes place in Seattle. So this is, this really is a uh, steampunk alternative history. Uh, so this is uh, in Seattle during the American Civil War. And it's, it starts off with the actual story of the Bone Shaker. So the Bone Shaker is this uh, huge great machine built by a man called Leviticus Blue. The point of which is to mine uh, through ice, like up in the north where there are gold mines to be had, only they can't get to them because uh, the ice is too thick. So Leviticus, Leviticus Blue creates this machine uh, that can drill through the ice and get to whatever lies beneath. However, he decides to go, uh, he kind of goes insane and goes on a rampage all the way through uh, Seattle city center uh, the and just shreds all the under uh, all the underground of the city to bits and his aim is to get to the vaults of the main banks and steal the money within so it's not entirely clear why he did this because he was he was given a lot of money to make the bone shaker but yeah, it's a it's a bit odd. So after the machine has um, destroyed like the the underground of Seattle, something happens. Uh, people start getting sick uh, because there is this gas that's coming out of the the hole created by the bone shaker, and it turns people into walking dead. Uh, flesh hungry zombies so the entire city well the city center at least is like they build this great big wall around it to cut cut it off to keep the zombies inside of it and keep people out and the story takes place um 15 years later from the point of view of two characters briar and her son ezekiel and briar is the wife of leviticus blue and uh ezekiel is his son so Briar is now uh, obviously really hated for being like the wife of the man who destroyed Seattle even though she had nothing to do with the bone shaker. She didn't even really know about it. And uh, Ezekiel wasn't born back then so obviously he had nothing to do with it either. But Ezekiel seems to think that his uh, father may have had like good reasons at heart for doing what he did. 
And the other character who comes up uh, is the grandfather, so Briar's father, Maynard, who was a policeman. And he is, he also has an interesting story because he was kind of hailed as a hero because when the city centre was being evacuated, he decided to set free uh, the prisoners that were in the police station. So there are like people who are very grateful to him because they feel like he saved uh, all these men's lives because they would have died uh, from the gas had he not saved them. Only Maynard died in the... Um, he died in the process of doing that. So he's kind of held, held as a hero for some and not as others. And the story starts with a reporter who's coming to see Briar to ask about her father. And Ezekiel, this is when we find out that Ezekiel believes that his father Leviticus might have had like ulterior motives for uh, rampaging through Seattle with the bone shaker. And that Maynard really was like the hero that some think he is. And he wants to go into uh, like behind the wall to try and find evidence of this. So he does, he runs away and he goes into Seattle city centre, beyond the wall, where the zombies are, where the lethal gas is, with a gas mask, obviously, uh, without telling his mother. And he thinks he's only going to be away for like a few hours. He just wants to go to her old house and come back. However, things don't go as planned. There's an earthquake. The tunnel he used to get into the city uh, collapses. He ends up cut off. He meets some people because it turns out there are people living inside the wall. And Briar then decides to go and follow him into the city to try and save him. Okay, and then zombies happen. Uh, people with mechanical arms happen. Um, there's like, you have all the people who live in the city and they are under the control of a man who is this kind of mad yet genius inventor that they believe might be uh, Leviticus Blue because nobody knows what happened to him. Uh, they don't know if he's dead, if he's still alive, where he went, he was never found. Uh, and Briar seems convinced that this man is not her supposed late husband However, uh, a lot of people there want her to like, have a look at him so that she can say whether or not he is or he isn't Leviticus. It all gets very interesting. A lot of things happen. Okay, so I really liked the um, character development bet like between Briar and her son Ezekiel because like, I mean, Ezekiel's a teenage boy He's got weird ideas. He wants to prove stuff. He wants to prove himself. Okay. But Briar, like, at the beginning of the novel, she doesn't think she's a good parent. Like, she, when, when Ezekiel disappears, she goes into his room and realises that she has never, like, seen the inside of his room before. And she has this whole moment of reflection where she's like, I'm not a good mother, am I? I'm not, I, okay, I feed this kid, but I work to keep him going, but... I'm not, do I really kind of talk to him or anything? She, she never had a discussion about his father Leviticus or even about Maynard. So obviously he wants to find out more and he decides to go into the city on his own. And she feels really guilty for that, which is why she goes on, uh, goes to the, she goes to great lengths to try and get him back. And this is just a decision she makes like in a second. She doesn't hesitate like, I'm not a good mum. Okay, I'm going to make up for it. And she really does, you know, she, she gets the city and she's like, I'm looking for my boy. Where's my boy? Where's my boy? And uh, and I really appreciated, like, the just the way, like, the, the sac like not necessarily the sacrifice, but just the, the amount of work she puts in to go going in and saving him. Um, the only thing I would, like, I kind of annoyed me at this book is it it is pretty slow um the pacing is slow i mean things happen a lot of things happen but like i would put it down to world building i think but yeah the plot does take a bit of time uh, to move along so there was a part of me that was like okay can we can we kind of get to the next bit but there was another part of me that kind of appreciated that because it did give a lot of time to kind of sit down and take in uh, this whole new world, as it were, because 
especially as like I'm not a person who reads a lot of steampunk like I have read steampunk novels in the past I'm more of a fantasy kind of girl um but I do appreciate the genre and uh yeah I thought this was a pretty good novel um so I, I gave it to my dad because uh, he picked up I think it was I can't remember which the, a book like a sequel book from this and he said okay I really like the style of this author I really like her writing I really like the alternative world she's created I want to read more of this so I gave him this novel it made me laugh my dad can't eat at the moment um he he can't eat anything he's got this kind of tube down his nose that's he's fed through a tube but the one thing that and it, it amused me that like the one thing he mentioned was that they kind of never eat in this book. Uh, they do, like they, there's a, a moment where one of them's eating figs and Ezekiel I think gets uh, like, asks for some food. Um, there's even a moment where Briar's kind of like, when was the last time I ate? My God, I'm hungry. Um, so there is like mention of food and thought of food in this, but like, yeah, a lot of his, uh, he talks a lot about food, my dad at the moment, cause obviously like he misses being able to eat. So, but hopefully, normally uh, if his treatment goes well in a month's time he should be able to eat again so yeah uh, they don't eat a lot um but yeah overall I, I i do like steampunk i really do um i like flying contraptions like the zeppelins they have there's a whole um point where uh briar goes to like the zeppelin port on this island and she like obviously the you've got the um the the how can I put this, legal ones as it were, uh, and then you've got the smugglers and they're the ones who go over the city, like Seattle over the wall, because the gas there, they use it to make a drug, so they they, they go and get the gas, and she, they're the people that she goes to uh, to go over the wall, so you've got a whole bit about like the zeppelins and how they work, there's even like a zeppelin on the cover and like reflected in her glasses. Uh, the, or the goggles. The goggles are important as well because they need, like, the gas you can't see it with the naked eye. You need a kind of pair of special goggles to be able to see it. So there's all these kind of little elements that get um, pointed out. Uh, the, the actual um, aesthetic of this novel I thought was really nice. I really like the cover. I really do. Uh, there's a map also of Seattle. Where is it? Where's the map? Oh yeah, and you've got these kind of interesting illustrations. Where's the map? Where is it? There it is. There you go. So they got the wall, uh, the interior of the city, which is along the port, uh, it's like the, the, the sea. Um, oh yeah, and just the, the chapters. Every single uh, chapter with Briar starts... Because like you, they alternate between like Briar's point of view and Ezekiel's point of view. The ones with Briar have these little goggles, uh, and the ones with Ezekiel, I think it's a lamp, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Is it a lamp? I think it's a lamp. Where is it? I can't find. I can't find it. Uh, yeah, there it is. There's the lamp uh, for Ezekiel, and the writing is in brown, uh, which I also I also thought was a really nice touch because um like steampunk there's a lot of copper involved in steampunk uh so the the kind of brownish shade and color comes around a lot like this sepia kind of world i think is what's um supposed to be put forward in this so i really do appreciate the aesthetic of that and also really appreciate the novel uh i really want to read because uh, she does have a brilliant style like I, I i agree with my dad on that and the world she created is interesting as alternative history goes so yeah pretty good novel uh, if you're into steampunk even if you're not why not uh, that was bone shaker by sheree priest okay and the second one is mortal engines by philip reeve this is a novel i wanted to read for a while now um it's not alternative history, it is a futuristic steampunk in a world where cities... Why am I shaking so much? Oh god. Yeah, so cities uh, are mounted on wheels. They have these huge great traction uh, caterpillar wheels. And they move around, they roam around the earth and hunt other cities for parts. And that's how they survive. They can't stay in one place anymore. 
they have to move around, okay? What's interesting about this is a lot of history has been lost. They know there's been a nuclear war of some kind where everything went wrong and the world had to change in a drastic way and a lot of people died. But technology, um, anything that was like record recordings of history were lost. But this novel um, basically centers around the city of London and they still have the Natural History Museum there. Uh, which is interesting and that's where the novel starts it's all centered around a character called tom and tom's an apprentice uh and it starts off with him cleaning stuff in the natural history museum and he is then like he gets sent down they, they the, like london attacks a city a small city and i mean, in, I, I love the, the kind of um language that just went with all the whole process of cities kind of hunting each other because it's it's all about feeding like it's a hunting um eating digesting and uh, the where they process the city as it were is called the gut and they feed on each other and they say oh it's a town eat town world it's an interesting um whole kind of ideology that that, that went into this the imagination was quite extraordinary um so yeah tom starts off in the natural history museum then he gets sent down to the gut and he meets his hero who is an archaeologist called valentine and valentine's daughter and he's really taken by valentine's daughter and wants to impress her and then an assassin tries to attack valentine and Tom decides to prove himself by hunting this man down. This man, this woman, uh, it's a woman. And she uh, manages to escape. Only Tom has a conversation with her and says, how can you attack Valentine? You know, he's so perfect. And she's like, well, look at my face. She's got this huge like, scar down her face. Said, well, he did this to me and he killed my parents. He's not that perfect. And then she escapes. At which point Valentine catches up with him, asks him if he spoke to this girl, and he says yes, he knows her name, he knows her story, and then Valentine shoves him out, <laughs> he shoves him overboard. And from this point on, Tom really has like a, a an entire kind of battle with his own brain starts because he like valentine was his hero he looked up to him he wanted to be him he wanted to be this great adventurer who went around the world uh, and finding relics only now he has to come to terms with the fact that this man tried to kill him because he found out the name of a girl who wanted to assassinate him and her name is hester so he ends up uh having to travel on the ground uh, with Hester, who's trying to obviously get back to London. She is obsessed with killing Valentine. She wants to avenge her parents. Um, and she doesn't really care about what happens to her afterwards. Okay. After that, um, the city sends a kind of robot after them, this kind of mechanical man. His name is Shrike. And Shrike knew Hester when she was little. He looked after her. He is a man who died uh, during the nuclear war and uh, at, that, at that time people possessed the technology to kind of bring the dead back to life and make them into these mechanical indestructible soldiers. And then he goes out and hunts them. So again, a lot of stuff happens. They, uh, they, they manage to catch a ship with a woman called Anna Fang who is an interesting character <laughs> and a complicated one. There's also a great big battle between the those who believe like the the the, the city should move so the that they should the traction people and those who are anti-traction who want to live in cities that are uh, on the ground. And Tom hates these people like they are really described as barbaric like how can you do that how can you live on the ground like technology uh, uh like advancing advancement is living on cities that move and i love how forward tom is with this like whenever he meets someone who disagrees with him he will just blurt out he will just say no you're wrong i'm right this is the truth and as the novel goes on 
he he kind of re- starts to realize that well maybe maybe it's not or maybe this isn't the best way to live but it takes time and that's that's such a great thing about this is even at the end when he ends up in an actual city that is on the ground he's still like obviously he's grateful because these people are kind of welcoming him and they're looking after them and Anna Fang's there and he likes her because she saved his life and it's all really great but uh these people are barbarians um i really like the style uh in which this book was written it's not very long as you can see it's about 300 pages however just the descriptions in it are basically the, like short descriptions done right i think this is a really good example of how you can conjure up an entire like complex world even with few descriptions and my favorite bit was this one i'll read it to you uh this is a this is the part when when tom is in the stationary city um and london is making its way towards the the city the city walls in order to break them down with this uh, very destructive machine they've discovered called uh, medusa News of Medusa was spreading fast through Bakmunt Gumpa, and already a lot of the houses and shops were shuttered. Their owners fled to cities further south. The lower levels were still packed with people, though, and as the sun dipped behind the wall, Tom wandered the crowd bazaar and, and steep ladderways. There were fortune teller booths at the street corners and shrines to the sky gods. Dust with, dust with the crumply grey ash of incense sticks. Fierce-looking Uyghur combat acrobats were performing in the central square, and everywhere he looked he saw soldiers and airmen of the League, blonde giants from Spitsbergen, the blue-black warriors from the Mountains of the Moon, the small dark people of the Andean statics, and people the colour of firelight, from jungle strongholds in Laos and Amman. He tried to forget that some of these young men and women might soon be dropping rockets on London and started to enjoy the flow of faces and incomprehensible mishmash of languages. And sometimes he heard someone say Tom or Thomas or Toma as they pointed him out to their friends. The story of his battle with Shrike had spread through the mountains from trading post to trading post and he had been waiting for him here in Bakmunt Gumpa. He didn't mind. It felt like a different Thomas that they were talking about. Someone brave and strong and understood what he had done. He felt no doubts. What I really liked about this bit is like Tom all the way through like he's he's kind of permanently having these daydreams about saving uh, Elizabeth Valentine's daughter's life like he wants to be a hero he wants to be someone that other people look up to but when that actually does start happening um, you know he actually understands the consequences of what it takes to be a hero that it means ending people's lives that it means destroying things that it comes with a great cost and just the the, the journey the kind of psychological journey he goes on is uh, is brilliant but the the other character I, I was kind of disappointed there wasn't more about him and that was shrike the kind of mechanical um corpse as it were i really i, th- I honestly i think i wouldn't say he was my favorite character but i re- he really did take me on an emotional journey because he he starts off he is told he's ordered to go and kill uh hester and Tom, but he knows Hester because uh, he used to look after her. However, uh, you know, he is obsessed with finding her. He is a hunter. He goes through a lot uh, to to try and get to her. And when he finally finds her, um, you know, she asks him like, why do you want to kill me? You know, you used to look after me. You used to, you know, do do your best to keep me alive. And now you want to kill me. And he tells her that the mayor of London promised that he would give him his um, greatest desire if he were to bring back Hester dead. And his greatest desire is for her to be turned into a mechanical uh, corpse herself. 
because then uh, and he I, I I didn't mark this bit but he says you know we we could be together we could be a couple forever and I love that I love that because it really reminded me of uh Frankenstein's monster this character who on the face of it is just a machine like he is no longer human no longer thinks like a human he is a machine uh he's become independent so he kind of has some kind of um like in independent thought but now he is being utilized uh, in order for london to understand how these uh, creatures are made so they can make them themselves um but he, you know obviously he's been around for a long time like this is uh, based like several thousand years in the future and he's been around for a bit like he's the only one left since the war and he's lonely and obviously he he's alone and you know just like frankenstein's monster was alone and asked frankenstein to create a partner for him he is in some way in love with hester in some, in his own kind of weird way and i found that very very moving um and i really would like to read more about this character like i really i'm really hoping he's going to come back in uh the, the 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 next novels there are uh three i think three sequel novels and there's one about anna fang um predator's gold is on the way my boyfriend bought it for me but it hasn't arrived yet but yeah overall i couldn't put this down i read it in like one go i could not put it down it's exciting it's it's fast paced uh it's really interesting the world uh philip reeve creates is really intense and breathtaking the characters are really good Tom's character's really good, the kind of journey of realisation he goes on, the him becoming a hero and realising the consequence of what it takes, Hester kind of having to deal with uh, failing to kill Valentine and then moving on with her life, like what does she do, um, you know, she, she, she failed, so what does she do after that, and, and, and Anna Fang uh, working with the, the kind of anti-traction league, and the whole, everything about the cities, you've got the, the people with their zeppelins, you've got the air city, um, and back Gumpa beyond the wall, the wall that stops the, the traction cities coming through, and how London wants to destroy that with Medusa. There's a lot of stuff going on in a, a short novel, and, you know, it takes a really good writer to be able to pack that much in and make it uh, all, like, coherent with good short but good descriptions so honestly uh this was the first book i read in 2021 and so far it's starting off pretty well uh as reading goes i'm very very pleased with this one so that was mortal engines by philip reeve so that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it uh if you did don't hesitate to leave a like to subscribe leave a comment share my video i really really hope to i really want to hear from you i do i really want to hear from people and if there's any other steampunk novels you think i might like um i don't i'm not that savvy when it comes to the steampunk genre as i said i'm more of a fantasy kind of person but yeah alternative history i've been looking it up there's a few that seem uh, quite interesting uh, such as everfair which i would really like to get my hands on so hopefully soon I'll be doing that one. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all soon. Bye bye.